Some of the seven suspects arrested for the murder of Gauteng health official Babita Diokaran have reportedly confessed to the crime. Diokaran was gunned down outside her Winchester Hills home in Johannesburg on Monday. She was a whistleblower and a witness against corruption in the department. Let's get more from ENCA's senior reporter Barry Bateman about it now. Barry, a very good afternoon to you. So, of course, we understand several suspects, uh, Barry, of course, you know, have confessed. What more can you tell us about this development? Well, a very big development uh, hearing this afternoon uh, that uh, some of these suspects uh, have uh, confessed to the crimes, but further than that, they have been appointing outs. So what this essentially means is an appointing out is part of the process uh, that police investigators will go through. Where they're dealing with a suspect who has confessed to a particular crime, they will take them to the scene of the crime where the suspect will, uh, within the presence and witnessed by uh, investigators, point out various aspects to corroborate what they say took place place on the day of the crime. So those appointing out processes have taken place yesterday. I understand that today there's also processes underway, but it's a significant step and I think it speaks to the excellent work that is being done by the police here. Um, you would have heard yesterday uh, I was reporting how it was crime intelligence who through their networks managed to trace the suspects uh, to the hideouts in Rosettenville. Uh, from that crime scene in uh, Winchester Hills, um, the police, uh, and I was out there earlier today as well, uh, th there were several of uh, uh, the surveillance cameras in the area, including on the complex, but apparently none of them were working. Uh, so the police were left with having to use other resources to try and track down these uh, uh, murderers, and they used cell phone technology. And it was with that that they managed to locate uh, or identify particular cell phones uh, in the, at the scene of the crime at a particular time, and it was using that that took them back to those scenes in Rosettenville. Of course, we know about the raid that took place on Thursday night. Um, um, the suspects having lived at the one um, uh, uh, house for about a month um, and having surveilled or kept eye on uh, uh, Babita Diakaran for several weeks before committing the crime yesterday or on, on Monday morning. So a significant development here. You can just imagine hard at work. We've got that first appearance in court on Monday. The state want to ensure that they have everything in, in a row uh, so that the suspects don't try to, um, you know, get released on bail because of course the state will be thinking about that um, and want to ensure they have a solid case should such happen when the men appear in court. You mention a significant development Barry but one that I think South Africans are more interested in concerned about is the mastermind. Do we know who that is? You know, this is what the police are seized with here. Whenever you are dealing with a conspiracy to commit murder case, it's easy to arrest the trigger men. The people at the bottom of the network who were given the money, a firearm, and took that firearm to the scene where they used bullets, that bullet connects them to the firearm and to the, the suspects. That's the easy part. The difficult part comes in when you've got several other layers of people and connections up until a kingpin that is ultimately the person who hired the people to commit the act of crime. And that is the struggle that the investigators are dealing with. Now, we already know from the special investigating unit that uh, Dio Curran was uh, a witness and had provided information in some high profile and very important and significant uh, PPE uh, corruption investigations. We also understand there are other investigations underway related to some hospitals in Gauteng, which might form critical part of this investigation at some stage. But once they have identified which of those uh, investigations uh, uh, regarding the PPE and so on are, are critical to this particular matter, they might then have a step in a direction towards getting to who might be responsible for this crime. But again, it's a matter of about closing that gap between the trigger men and the mastermind that the police are seized with. But do we have any confidence from them, Barry, that they will get to the bottom of this? Well, it has been three days. It took them three days, crime intelligence, to go from the crime scene to actually arresting people. I think they have shown certainly a commitment uh, to uh, resolving or solving this crime. I think at this stage it would be fair to say, uh, you know, it would be fair to give them a bit of confidence uh, and credit that they will get to the mastermind. All right, Barry, we'll leave it there with you for now. Thank you very much. That is our senior reporter, Barry Payton.